Hey everyone, I'd like to show you today how to do customizations to your application's UI um, visually using Interface Builder uh, instead of doing it using code. So what I have here uh, is an application that's very, very similar to the ones we've seen in previous videos. Um, just a simple or classic task entity with a one-to-many relationship to a task step entity. Um, again, a master view controller that's completely empty. And our storyboard here. So what we have here, so this is the master view controller. Uh, there is an array of objects section connected to a task entity, as you can see here. And if we have a look at task entity, very similar to what we've seen before. Um, uh, this has been automatically generated from the core data model. And um, in task steps here, it's connected to the task step entity, which is in turn just a very simple definition of the task entity here. Um, let's just first run this and see what we have got here. Okay, so just this is what we're used to, just like the details of each task and uh, some task steps here and ev everything standard. Uh, what we're going to discuss now, how we're going to be customizing every aspect of this application. So let's return back here. Uh, the first cell that we can customize is this cell and this cell is basically a representative of all the cells that are generated for the tasks. And we can change the style here from um, a subtitle cell to a completely custom one and start dragging labels here. And um, let me just call this name. And what you've seen here is something very interesting that we've developed. Uh, it's called uh, curly brace binding which means the STV will automatically fetch whatever value is in the property called name and display it in this label. Uh, curly bra brace binding is, uh, uh, is valid for labels, text views, and uh, text fields. So let me just take a copy of this here. And uh, let's say I want to display the category. So let's change this to um, um, just an orange color. Let's quickly add some constraints. I'm going to pin it here and vertically align it in container. And let's update the frames here. Similarly, just going to pin this here and vertically center it. Again, updating frames. So if I run now, I see like this is my custom cell and I can customize it in any way I want. And since the, this cell is representative of all the other cells, you see it repeated getting like the, the, the data from whatever uh, data we have internally here. If we change this to other, for instance, it's loaded back here and everything is working as expected. Uh, currently brace binding is actually much more interesting than that. So for instance, let's take this category and cha change it to the uh, percent complete. Value. Um, when we do this, uh, we have a slight problem here that decimal places are sometimes not necessarily what we want, and the user doesn't know what this number is. So, with curly brace binding, we have added what we call prefixes. So, you could now add any prefix or suffix to the to the to, to the binding. So, for instance, I could add a percent mark here. And I could specify the number of decimal places. For instance, if I put dot zero, I, I mean I want just one decimal place. So having this here, let me just update the frames here and run. 
so we're now getting the correct decimal place and we're getting the percent mark, which would the percent mark would of course be a challenging thing if you're using auto layout to, to add an extra label and and lay out this label uh, uh, individually for each field. So this saves a lot of time. So now let's check how we're going to be able to customize the detail theme. So if we're easily full, so this view is fully customizable very easily. And uh, before in STV, we used to customize detail views using code. What we're going to explore today is how to customize all this on an interface builder. So I'll return back here. And when you select an array of objects section, you now have actually the option of generating a detail view on an interface builder. You don't have to do that. You could still work the old way. Uh, but th this is just an alternative convenient way of customizing the detail view writing code. So I've clicked that and I can see that the detail view has been generated here. Uh, everything is using auto layout, so it's going to work in any size class, whether it be compact or um, working on an iPad on a regular width or, or any size you might have. And you can start doing whatever customizations here. Like for instance, I want um, text field color to be red. I want um, to have like a distinct color for the name cell. And uh, let's say I want to resize this label or I want the text to be in the middle. And uh, the really cool thing about this is that it's not, it's not just static cells here. It's completely tied to this live. Uh, for instance, if the details here, I changed from de the title to description, for instance. It changes here. Um, uh, let's say uh, the category, I want to change from selection to a segmented control. It changes here. So it's live. So uh, as, long, as long as you have uh, the live sync with definition checked, all these cells are live and they're connected in a non-destructive way to your property definitions. Non-destructive meaning if you remove anything from here, it's not going to go and remove it from the UI. So if you if if, if you follow this correctly, uh, closely, I mean, you you would find that there are two segues here. So one of the segues is connected to the cell, and the other is connected to the whole section. And the one that's connected to the cell is basically the detail view. When you tap the cell, this is the detail view that appears. And the one that's connected to the section is basically for new items. Uh, what we have here is that they're both pointing to the same uh, uh, view controller, but you can change this. You can come here and in new item view generation, remove same as detail view and the segue is gone. And you can either have now SCV generate automatically or again, generate the new one in Interface Builder. Let's say we just don't want the status to appear for new items. And uh, I'll mark this as um, a red required cell, for instance. Um, yeah, maybe that's too strong. Oops. And let's, let's run and see like what we're going to have here. So like I'm going to run again. OK. So as you can see, like all our customizations, the text here is uh, red, the, color, the background color, and the category, instead of being on its own detail view of selection, I'm, I'm just doing it right here. So like, um, and yeah, and it can change everything. And um, let's go to the new detail. As you can see, like it comes without the status section, and the colors are different here. Um, let me test this. And then, and it's working. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you guessed this correctly. Test steps can also generated its detail views. So we can go here and this is the detail view that, that the test steps are listed in. 
and again this goes on so like you can generate the detail view for every single task step again this is all live for instance i want to change details here i just uh, notice it's it's not a, it's not actually a text view so i'm going to come here change this to a text view and everything is changed uh, so you can go in here you can resize the labels if you wish updating the updating the auto layout constraints so this is going to be auto resizing as long as you have um, the, the auto resize uh, button uh, and the cell mark and um, yeah the auto resize check mark marked here and each cell has its own bound properties you can you can start even adding um, your own custom sections here with your own custom cells and like let's say you want to add like uh, a, a button cell or something um, and connect this using you can connect this using segways what, whatever it's it's just open to any kind of customizations you want thank you so much and this has been just a, almost scratching the surface of customizations and stv 4.0 in our face builder thank you very much